Hello everyone, good to know you're watching on the other end. Today I we come to you with the word of the Lord and we want to consider a very, very powerful portion of scripture, words of the Lord Jesus Christ. But first, let's say welcome to my good friend, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Anyamu. It's so good to have you around. So today we're actually talking about a vision for the harvest, looking at the Lord Jesus Christ as our focus. Glory to God. So we're looking at the book of Luke chapter 4 from verse 17, where the Lord Jesus declared his vision for the world. Let's read that please. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Mm. And when he has opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Hallelujah. because he has anointed me to preach the, the gospel to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recover of sight to the blind. To set the liberty them that are bruised. Yeah. 19. Yes. To preach the acceptable years of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Now, this is really, really so powerful. Now, because of time, we might not go uh, down to the, after he finished declaring, you know, some drama you know, happened yeah. after he, he told them, today, this statement has been fulfilled in your hearing. All right. Now, I want us to talk about this because I know when people read the portion of scripture, like this, they say, okay, that was Jesus. Okay. He had a vision for the harvest of the world. So I am not Jesus. So I don't need to carry the whole world on my head and all of that. But we are seeing here that this is more like a pattern because everything about the life of Jesus Christ is a dimension for the believer. So can we talk about having a heart for the harvest or a vision for the harvest from whatever angle we're coming now because not everyone may be called to be in quote a rabbi like Jesus words some people are businessmen architects uh, engineers and all of that what does it does it really take or what does it really look like to have a vision for the harvest by the way when we say harvest we're talking about the lost souls those that Jesus died for please sir, please, sir. hallelujah amen um, the vision for the harvest yes, is why we just write the spirit of the Lord is upon me yes, to preach the gospel to the poor, yes, to those who are blind. Yes, sir. You know, the vision is to bring souls into the harvest, mm -hmm. to bring the mm -hmm. lost soul, the lost soul of Israel who have lost the enemy, the devil has tied them down. Mm -hmm. So it's a vision and the vision which we're given to him to lose them, to set the cactus free. Oh, praise God. For the redemption mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Yes, sir. So it's more like Jesus having a vision for those who are not yet saved. To bring them into the kingdom i think we also see that expressed in the book of john chapter 10 when he said uh he said an other sheep i have that are not of this fold yeah. i'm going to bring them in no no i want us to approach this because i want us to see how it applies to our individual lives now yeah we're supposed to be conformed to christ yeah. but remember it's the holy spirit that brings about that uniqueness yeah. such that physically i might not look like that yeah. man jesus christ yeah. when he walked the earth so but the holy spirit helps me in my own context to reproduce Jesus once again upon the earth, right? Now, how do we now, let's say I'm a businessman, architect or whatever, how can I really walk in such a dimension? You know, you talked about bringing in Israelites and of course that was the first dimension when he went to the cross. It was no longer just about the Israelites, it was now about every believer, the Gentiles all over the world. Everyone is to be brought into the kingdom. So how can we bring about a practicality of such into the kingdom? It is a way of life that is in you, that your lifestyle with Jesus, okay. you know, you have already been with him right from the inception, the okay. spirit of God is in you, okay. he has already impacted you, wow. and so you all, as a businessman or any field, mm -hmm. you will minister from the area of your, area of your specialization, wow. area of your field, mm -hmm. minister in business, those who are in business, mm -hmm. you can win souls through mm -hmm. the business, mm -hmm. because whatever you are doing, it's all about the kingdom, it's not even about you. Wow, I love you made a very striking point here, talking about it is the Holy Spirit that gives you a vision yeah. for the harvest. Yes. I mean, I think it's good to establish that because yes. from what Jesus said, He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because yeah. He has anointed me yeah. to do all of what He mentioned. So, we recognize the role of the Holy Spirit because yeah. I, I see that it's it's something there's work to be done, really. In other, I mean, like more of like a conditioning of the heart yeah. because. Many times we only understand ministry just from the place of the pulpit. Okay, this is a pastor, this is an evangelist, this is a prophet, and all that. But believers have not seen the need, like most believers rather, don't see ministry in their own context. Mm. 
And I, from what we're reading here, I discovered that for anything, for you to express God in your context, to bring in the harvest into the kingdom of God, there must first be a vision for the harvest. I'll give you an example. Let's say we're in a workplace, for example, and let's say uh, I got into this new job and uh, I'm seeing faces. Let's say I'm even being interviewed for a job. Let's start from there. As I'm being interviewed, I'm just thinking about everyone who is coming in and passing those who are around. I'm like, I'm just calculating, imagining all these guys coming to the kingdom. That's where it all begins. Mm -hmm. So it's not when I've already entered, you know, because sometimes that might be too late. So, but now you start, when you now get in, for example, you start, oh, when you get to meet them, oh, hello, I'm David, oh, I, 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 I'm John, oh, good to meet you. You walk here, oh, I'm, I'm that. Oh, you take down his name, you take, as you meet people, you begin to pray for people, because that's always the starting point. Then as the Spirit of God leads you, sometimes you see opportunities that now show up, you're able to minister to them. But you see, it always starts with a vision for the harvest. So I want us to look at it, because you see, we want to see the possibility first yeah. that in my own context I can have a vision for the loss. Because people who don't think about the loss never get people saved. Yeah. Because first you're not thinking that people will say, if an opportunity comes, I will preach. The, those kind of people will never see an opportunity because the opportunity comes but you know, have you never noticed you're looking for something and then things related start coming your direction. Mm -hmm. But when you weren't looking at it, for it in the first place, it was like you never got to see anything like that. So desires, what goes on on the inside, attracts things on the outside. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So I believe that believers have been called for the harvest. Mm -hmm. And just to think about the fact that one day we're going to do this work and every other thing that we've been working for, as important as they are to us right now, they wouldn't matter. The Bible said that blessed are those who die in the Lord from this time onward. He said that for their works, follow them. Not their properties, not, not anything they've earned here on earth. So I wanted to talk more on that, please, on how we can practicalize it. I know you're an evangelist. You, you preach the gospel. You reach out to people and they're different circles. But not everyone is called to do what you're doing. So how can you, let's say you're talking to someone today who is really in a different field, to catch a vision for the harvest, how can that be expressed? Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I'll look at it from the view of the medical. Okay. You know, the medical so very before you see a doctor, the doctor wrote in their their profile that we doctor we treat, but God <laughs> heals. And so yeah. the doctor is the spirit of God has uh, is in him to exercise in that area of his profession. Yeah. He's give the treatment, yeah. but God is the healer. Yeah. It's another way of throwing soul yeah. back to the kingdom. Yeah. You know, yeah. so referring people back, yeah, to, back God. to the back to God, yes, and a man who is in business, it is not even about him. The spirit of God is in him, mm -hmm. and so people who are coming is more about buying and selling, mm -hmm. and so his more primary purpose is the kingdom, not even about him, because the spirit of God enabled him to do that, wow. making him into that wow. profession. So, so how do we communicate that now? Because to them, they are only seeing a nice doctor. Yeah. Or they are seeing a, a good business guy or a good uh, or whatever the, the profession. How do we make the transition to let them know that, hey, this is not just about my niceness, yeah. my skill and all of that. There is a Jesus that sponsors yeah. my life. How do we bring that connection? Okay. Because I don't think we need to take a cross and show them. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I think that there are practical ways. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, the Bible says, you know, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. Wow. And he who wins the soul is wise. wise. Wow. So in your profession, your more the spirit of God enables you to win souls. Wow. Your own primary assignment is so wow. for you to primary win. assignment. Your primary wow. assignment in every profession God has kept you there is to win souls. So you're not there for the money. You are not there for money. It's about the kingdom, it's yes. about the soul, yeah. I mean it's so powerful. So God is actually sending us into this field on purpose for souls. Yeah. Wow. The money is an addition. Wow. The pro, the, after you seeking the kingdom of draw women, those things is your God knows about how you can meet up to your need. Wow. When your passion and your desire is for his his primary aspect of that which mm. he has called you into mm. the spirit of God in you wow. is to bring into the harvest of the souls. Wow. And so and your, yeah, please, please, please. Your, your need, he knows about your need. Wow. Lucy and he will take care of that. Wow, glory to God. I love that. You know, the Bible tells in Matthew chapter 3 and chapter 6, towards the end, he said that your father knows that you have need of this thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we forget that he knows. Mm -hmm. So we are so like calculative, and if I don't meet the need, it's mm -hmm. not going to be met. He said, No, if you seek first my kingdom, I know. And I don't know, you must have experienced that because I know you're, you you work. So sometimes you're so occupied with God's kingdom that yeah. God takes care of some of the details and you don't even expect Him to even pay attention That's to right. you. You know, because He's really concerned about us. You know, while we're sharing, a, a, a thought came to mind that this man who was asked, What do you do? Yeah. Actually, on the outside, what people saw was a businessman. Yeah. You know, he does business and I think, like, is it uh, construction or whatever. 
Uh, we was asked, what do you do? And he said, I'm a soul winner, mm. but I do so, so and so. That's right. To support myself while I preach the gospel. I'm like, wow, oh. what a mindset. Mm. How many people think like that today? I mean, everybody, what do you do? I'm, I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer, I'm an architect. I'm a, and do you preach the gospel? Yeah, I want to have an opportunity. I look forward to opportunities. I hope I get it. Mm. And you know, when you treat opportunities that way, they, don't, they never show up. Right. The same people who are looking for business opportunity, they go all out. Mm. So you see that there's something wrong with the way we see the kingdom business, this uh, assignment that we've been called to. So yeah. the purpose of this conversation today is for us to be able to understand that we, we must first, it must start with a vision. Right. You see, when there's a vision, other things follow. Yeah. Even the provision, of course, as people say, it follow. And we trust the Lord that everyone who is watching us today is, uh, is listening to the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit tells the vision. Now, the way the vision might come to me in my own context might be different from the way it comes yeah. to someone else. So it's not about trying to mimic someone else's expression and say, oh, that's the way it comes to that preacher or that person. No, it's about Holy Spirit in this environment. What's the plan? Mm. And then the Holy Spirit gives you a vision for those people in that context. And before you know what, you're effective. Uh, you know, even in our crusade, we discover that what works in one community doesn't necessarily work in another, in another community. It has to be the Holy Spirit telling you every, about every community and there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a kind of a, a special customized plan right. that works for every one of those communities and at the end of the day we become effective for the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Yes, all right, thanks for watching. We hope you've learned something. Yes. The goal of all of these is that at the end of the day, God can use you in your own context. You don't become useless for God. The truth is that God loves every one of us equally, Amen. but our usefulness to God is different and you decide how useful you are to God That's by right. how much you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, Amen. partner with Him, to bring about the kingdom of God in your context. Mm -hmm. And I trust the Lord that in your context, Jesus would be glorified Amen. every single day. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to having you watch our next video again. God bless you. Amen. Amen.